So if God created everything in perfect order, how do you explain Pangea? The theory that all the continents used to be joined together? Exactly. I mean, it's quite obvious that they fit together like a puzzle, but they've been moving slowly apart for over millions of years. Plus, we have correlated fossils on each side of the continents that were together, now they're separated. We can see this on the continents on each side of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, for example, which is a 10,000 mile tear or rift like a baseball seam running right down the middle of the Earth. Have you ever considered that the continents were once together and were quickly and catastrophically separated? Not slowly over millions of years? I mean, you do have millions of the same creatures like chilobites that are buried in mud layers on each side of the matching continents. We can also see how they match perfectly if they're put back together. And we have quite a clue about how they were split apart. The obvious mid-Atlantic ridge you pointed out. Uh, yes, but it took millions of years and it did not happen quickly. We know this because today they're moving apart slowly, only inches per year based on GPS measurements. Well, then how do you explain the Morrison Formation where 13 states of dead dinosaurs in the middle of America are buried with marine creatures under unimaginable amounts of mud and ash. I'm not sure I'm following you. Oh, well, I have a mobile app from Genesis Apologetics that has a video that explains it in just a few minutes. Check this out. Have you ever wondered how the massive dinosaur kill zone in the middle of America happened? We're talking about three countries, 14 states, and a stretch over 1,800 miles long and 1,000 miles wide. Over a million square miles are filled with the remnants of most known dinosaur species, and they're all mixed with other land animals, fish, birds, and all sorts of sea life. The leading theory asserted by evolutionists is that an asteroid hitting the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, over 1,000 miles away from the heart of this disaster zone, is why millions of dinosaurs are buried in mud and ash. But that doesn't make sense, because the billions of fossils in this area were buried in multiple mud and ash layers from successive watery events. There's also vast areas of crumpled and buckled geology from land masses that were laid down wet and then folded. And this action was obviously driven by rapidly subducting plates. Evolutionists explain how oceanic plates, like the Farallon Plate, slowly subducted over tens of millions of years under the North American continent uneventfully, while the millions of dinosaurs now buried in this kill zone somehow just kept living and thriving. Both secular and creation scientists agree that the Farallon Plate subducted under North America, even carrying massive volcanic plateaus like the Conjugate Shatsky Rise along with it going from the west to the east. But we disagree, and with good reason, that the dinosaurs somehow just kept peacefully thriving in this area while this was happening. This subducting action would be like a spatula sliding beneath an undercooked pancake, creating massive folding and buckling just like we see all over North America today. The process even explains the rapid and catastrophic formation of the Rocky Mountains. This happened just thousands of years ago during Noah's Flood, when the fountains of the Great Deep were broken apart and the year-long process of the worldwide flood unfolded. Massive oceanic rifting on a worldwide scale created new seafloor that was pulled under the continents, creating cycles of tsunamis that occur when the seafloor binds and then releases, just like tsunamis are generated today. This explains the multiple layers these creatures are found in as they were buried by the ever-increasing flood waters and tsunamis. These dinosaurs were buried furiously, with over 90% of them now found disarticulated or torn apart. Many of them are even found choking on mud as they died, with their necks arched backwards. Widespread volcanism that occurred during this process also shows this happened quickly, over a year, and not millions of years. With no volcanoes in the Morrison Formation itself, where the bulk of these dead dinosaurs are found, logic demands that the huge volume of volcanic ash in the Morrison Formation to have been erupted from megavolcanoes on the west coast, lofted, and carried far to the east by wind. The Morrison Formation's brushy basin member alone spans five states and includes over 4,000 cubic miles of volcanic material. That's enough to cover the state of New Jersey in ash 740 meters deep, and there are plain indicators that this happened rapidly, not over millions of years. How else can we explain this recently discovered massive dinosaur graveyard where 10,000 adult Myasaura were found buried in mud without a single young mixed in with the entire herd that was buried? 
every single dinosaur in the area was at least 9 feet long. It sounds like the adult dinosaurs were stampeding away from the imminent danger of raging floodwaters. Their young could not keep up and became engulfed in some lower part of the peninsula. These evidences sure point to the rapid and widespread catastrophe of the flood. Okay, I'm not sure I'd agree with everything on that video, but they do explain a few possible theories. 